Why don't I post my Massachusetts videos more often in February? Well, in today's episode, I'll show you why. Hello, welcome to another episode of Massachusetts. I'm your host, Bob Tremblay. You know, longtime subscribers have noticed that there's often a gap is in terms of my video postings. So I'll post a number of them in January, then there's often a big gap in February. And people have wondered, why is that? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly why. The reality is that my day job, I am a community college professor at a small rural community college here in, uh, well, in, in western Massachusetts. And I am the department chair of adventure education and outdoor leadership. And when our spring semester starts up in February, one of the courses that I teach involves an eight-day wilderness winter expedition, typically in the North Main Woods. And so this year, that's why I'm always gone. I'm always gone on my big winter expedition in February, which takes me away from, from dog sledding and takes me away from posting videos. So um, in this February, we did exactly that. Uh, the first week of February, we had a real Arctic blast of cold weather, and it synchronized exactly with our expedition. So we were in northern Maine, um, in the 100-mile wilderness in northern Maine, up by Greenville, uh, Maine. And this year, we were looking forward to seeing the, <clears throat> there's a sled dog race, the wilderness sled dog race, that would have been passing through the region. And we were going to try to coordinate our expedition to kind of see them pass by on some of the trails that we would have been out on. But the weather was actually so severe that they can't they um, canceled the sled dog race for the later week, and uh, so that kind of took that out of there. Anyway, we had to change our plans. We we're up there; the temperatures were negative 23. We had <clears throat> winds of steady winds of 50 miles an hour with gusts um, to 70. Uh, the wind chill was going to go down to like below 80, um, 80 below zero. So we ended up, we were up there for three days. We changed our plans, mostly not just because of the temperatures, but we were worried about falling trees. And then we regrouped and went to southern Vermont, where we traveled on, the, we did our expedition for five days on the Catamount Trail, which is a cross-country ski trail that goes the length of Vermont from Massachusetts to Canada. So we traveled on that, and we also traveled on Harriman Reservoir, which really made a great uh, winter expedition. As far as um, dog sledding goes, it is the, I first was introduced to this area in Vermont um, when I took Bandit and Shiva out dog sledding. So the Catamount Trail is a really, really good trail to run dogs on. And then the reservoir also is a really great place to take dogs out for a winter experience. So in today's episode, I am going to share some photographs from our expedition, um, which I hope you'll find interesting. And you'll see us sledding without dogs. So a very different episode. I hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned and we'll, I'll share our winter expedition with you. So my students, uh, when they graduate from the program, end up working as wilderness guides, rafting guides, mountain climbing guides, wilderness therapists, um, all kinds of things in the outdoor industry. So we teach them to become professional outdoor leaders. So in this particular expedition, we start off every year in the 100-mile wilderness in the North Main Woods. And for a lot of my students, this is their first night out sleeping in winter conditions. So we start off in these, um, in these, uh, spruce, these spruce trees. And uh, our students learn to be very comfortable in the outdoors. This is my tarp. We teach them how to make snow, t uh, snow trenches and to camp out in tarps. And everybody cooks on uh, whisper light stoves. This is my kitchen area right here. So, um, and then when we're out there, of course, we're traveling and exploring the backcountry on Nordic skis. So here we are in Maine. But then, of course, the weather turned extreme and we had to move down to Vermont. Um, around Harriman Reservoir. And so here we are traveling on our Nordic skis, hauling um, our sledges behind us. On the, in our backpacks, we have all of our light kind of um, down gear. And in the sleds, we have our heavier uh, materials and items. So the Catamount Trail is kind of like the Appalachian uh, Trail 
where it's a long distance trail, 300 miles, and it allows you to actually cross country ski the entire length of Vermont. So we're on the catamount. And then of course we're going along Harriman Reservoir and we leave the trail and we're going to head to that pine tree to make our camp. And so here we are where we have actually left the trail. We're skiing across the ice of the reservoir heading to our camp. Here's my class uh, making camp by that big pine tree. And then once the camp is set up, uh, the students have some time to kind of relax and reflect and just kind of take the amazing scenery in. Um, really a very beautiful, remote, um, arctic-looking landscape. This is looking across the reservoir. You can see where the, the water had dropped, and so some of the ice um, has broken, where rocks have kind of pushed up and broken through the ice. And um, so here we are. There's one of the pyramids that one of my, a couple of my students slept in. Um, and as night comes on, we're settling in for the night in our camp. And then, um, oh, there we go. Beautiful shot. Temperature here is probably about, I don't know, single digits for sure. Um, this is the next morning when we get up, and as students are making their breakfast, you can see they build little platforms for their stoves and windbreaks for their kitchen areas. Um, here I am making my breakfast with my skis in the background. And then uh, another little trick that we teach the students to do is to take their uh, sled, flip it upside down, and use that as their cooking surface for their stove and their pots and everything. And here we are getting ready to go out on the ice and we're packing up for the day to move on. Uh, this next shot here is, there's my sled with my skis tied on because since we're going across the ice, we can't use our skis, we have to use our micro spikes. So here's my students with everything um, packed up and we actually have to get down onto the ice to, to hike. So it's the easiest thing to do is just to ride the sleds. And so here we are riding the sleds down onto the reservoir surface. And there's a good shot of the micro spikes that we wear to give us traction as we walk across the ice for the next few days. Um, and here we are traveling. So you can see that we tow the sleds with these hard um, trace lines, uh, which enable us to pull the sleds and also kind of steer them really easily. And we're just kind of traveling and trucking along. One of my students didn't have micro spikes, so he had to wear snowshoes with crampons on to give himself traction. Um, we're hauling a lot of weight, but it really is very easy to haul everything in the sleds. Um, winter camping with sleds is great and um, gives me a little taste of what it must be like for my dogs when they're pulling a sled. Um, all, everything where we are here, the Catamount Trail, oh, here's a bunch of coyote tracks. There were a lot of coyotes out there. And so our second night out on the reservoir, we actually put the students on a solo. So there's one of my students. We spread all eight students out along the shoreline and they all spent a night uh, by themselves um, setting up their own tarps and shelters and spending the time solo. Here's the moon rising as my students enter their solo night and we have a beautiful evening out here on the reservoir. So uh, as I was saying is the Catamount Trail is great for dog sledding. Um, the reservoir itself also is. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit more snow on there. Here's my camp while my students are on solo. My tarp this is the morning of, and so um, shortly after breakfast, the students return to our base camp. Here I am kind of waiting for my students to show up, and they start appearing out of the woods after successfully spending a night by themselves in the wilderness in Arctic, Arctic conditions. We all gather up and regroup, and we start heading back to, um, this is day eight, and we're heading back to the beginning of the Catamount Trail where our vehicle is parked, hauling along, and then so we end the expedition skiing without sleds, kind of enjoying this hill for a little bit, and then uh, we return after eight days. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It's very different from the ones that we usually post on this channel. Um, if you liked it, I'm thinking of doing some other ones. I could do a similar uh, video like this um, describing my through hike of the Appalachian Trail um, from Maine to Georgia um, that I did back in 1981, and I could do other things like that as well. So, uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, you can see we've had a late February snowstorm. We got fresh snow on the ground. I'm going to hook up the sled and take the dogs out and uh, enjoy this while we can. So again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the trail sometime soon.